Hello and welcome to another edition of the Lynn Lowdown. And we have an old friend with us. Samantha is here. How are you, Samantha? Hey, Mukala. Nice um, to see everybody. Nice to see you. How's it going? You know, it's it's great. It's you know, I have I'm, I don't have to wear a coat today. I could go outside in just a t-shirt. The sun is out. It's gonna be a good beautiful day. Beautiful thing. Yeah. Up. People are coming out. It's good. Yeah, de definitely. Oh, you no, know, you guys. You guys are still keeping busy over there at Arts After Hours. Just, you know, before we get into everything, just, you know, tell me how the past the past year has been for you. Yeah, well, you know, Lynn, people notice they haven't heard much from us. We, mm -hmm. you know, we got taken out just like a lot of other businesses, a lot of theaters especially. And we had an amazing season planned for everyone. Mm -hmm. It was going to be our big 10th anniversary season. I feel like I was on your show hyping it up before it was going to happen. And mm -hmm. then you know, all that had to be reconsidered. So uh, we took that in stride and we were like, all right, what are we going to do to make sure we can come back strong and mm -hmm. fresh? And um, so the board and I have been doing a lot of work on anti-racism and, and readjusting our own priorities and the people that we have in our organization, making sure that we're coming back on the right side of things, ready to look at things through a different lens mm -hmm. for safety with COVID and just in the world because it's a new place. So uh, this play contest is kind of our first stab at that. Yeah, well, the, with all that time off, did it, did it give, did it give the, the organization some, you know, so much some time to create more stuff for the future? Was that, was that one, of the one of the benefits of that? You were able to, you know, put together ideas for when you guys get back into the uh, the thick of things? Yeah, you know, it it wasn't a huge creative time, to be honest. It, it was sort of just difficult to get in that creative mindset for me as an artist, I think, uh, as a producer, as a curator of the seasons. Um, I, I gleaned so much of that from being in Lynn and just getting the vibe of the community and seeing the audiences. And so kind of took the wind out of my sails for a while and, and mm -hmm. we needed to just pull up a little bit and, and say, all right, let's take a breather. Cause we were going, 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 you know, our mm -hmm. seasons were just like packed full. Wasn't a lot of break. We were starting the next show when the other show was wrapping up. So we were going to take a, a little pause anyway. Mm -hmm. And then I, in a way I felt like the pandemic sort of said, here's a pause. Now do do some real, real work and some real introspective work. So no, it wasn't a lot of creativity going on. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like we're just kind of getting on the, on the other end of things where we can start thinking about the future and planning and um, feeling the confidence like we can plan because you know, there's a little bit of, of a, a collected trauma around, around planning things. Mm -hmm. and we know that now we know anything can happen. It can take those plans away and take away that work. So we're treading carefully. And that's sort of the contest checks a lot of boxes for us in terms of feeling like it's attainable. Um, mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to it. And and the contest has really gotten my creative wheel spinning right. now. Like right. now that I'm back in it, I'm like, oh yeah, this is what it's like. This is what it feels like. Feels yeah. To be yeah, let, <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about this contest. Your play, the playwrights contest that is going on right now. Yeah. Just, you know, just give, give us a little background information of, about it. Yeah. So we get, you know, probably at least one a month of like just cold call submissions from people, uh, in the past years that I've worked for the company, you know, Hey, I'm a playwright. Here's my play. I'm trying to get it off the ground. You want to produce it, but financially to produce a play that no one knows by an upcoming playwright, it's a big risk for an organization. And I was really open about my focus being, uh, we got to build ourselves some capital. You know, we have exclusive rental of the black box theater and the Lynn arts building. That's a big chunk of change. We got to pay for the show rights that we do. Um, you know, there's a lot of financial components that just made us not really able to honor all of the creative minds that wanted to be a part of it in a playwriting capacity. So this idea has been kind of on the back burner for a while. Like, how do we give playwrights a voice in arts after hours? Um, and a 10 minute play, you know, that feels really achievable, even to folks that maybe don't come from playwriting. Mm -hmm. So immediately we were like, you know, this is a, this is a concept that could be open to a lot of people. Uh, we opened it to students ages 14 and older. So we were hoping that some of the 
high schoolers would want to get involved and just submit and say, uh, you know, here's my work, I'm putting it out there. Um, and so we're going to, we're taking any submissions we can ages 14 and older. They are due on, uh, by midnight on the 15th. So mm -hmm. there's still a bit of time. It's only 10 minutes, right? Like yeah. approximately 10 pages. I feel like you could get a good, a good scope of writing out in a couple of days. Definitely. Um, and so we're hoping to get as many people involved as we want. Cause that's a, a lot of our introspective work has mm -hmm. been, we want more Lynn people involved in the creativity that we bring to, to downtown. Was that one of the guidelines for it? Uh, you have to be from Lynn? Not directly from not, Lynn. Not directly, Lynn, but. We wanted it to be open to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but we made a note, a diversity statement and a note about, we really wanted to encourage Lynn playwrights. And mm -hmm. uh, we've got some fierce adjudicators on the team also representing Lynn. We got Danica Thurston, the exec director at the museum. She's one of the adjudicators. Uh, Tia Cole, who I feel like is creative artistic royalty in Lynn. I love her. She's Tia, Tia is something else. She's Tia just everywhere, not, right? Yeah. And I was like, if I get her in this play contest, you know, people are going to come come and want to be a part of it because she's a part of it and she's just such a connector. Yeah. Um, so those are the the Lynn natives. I got a couple of the fields. I'm still finalizing that group. Um, but we also have some playwrights on the adjudication committee that aren't local to Lynn, but are North Shore area, Melaine mm -hmm. Hall and Kyle Gregory. Some folks might remember their names. Um, and this is all on our Facebook page. Hoping to get one more adjudicator. It's still in the works, but I'll be announcing that soon. So we have a team of five. Okay. Um, you notice I'm not one of those folks. <laughs> I, I wanted to kind of you wanted yeah. to fall back? You wanted to fall yeah. back? I just wanted to give give the stage to some other folks and sort of just be a, a facilitator and say, mm -hmm. what do we want to see, people? We got some Lynn people picking. We got some writers who aren't local to Lynn picking. Uh, and they're going to come up with three winners from the okay. pool of candidates. So there's a good opportunity to be one of those three that get your play produced. Okay. It and how will the process go to picking those? You know, how long, how long is it? When, when would you announce the three winners? Mm -hmm. So we're going to have all the submissions by Monday. I'm going to mm -hmm. give the committee a chance to read them probably a couple of weeks. Cause we do have a, a good chunk of submissions. I want to mm -hmm. give them a chance to read them with their own time and, you know, make some notes and, and feel what feels like some top candidates to them. We're going to come together for a couple of meetings talk things through, brainstorm. Uh, but one of the, the factors that was really important to me is the anonymity of the playwright. So part of my job as facilitator is cutting all of the playwright information from the script. So the adjudication committee is just getting script, characters, the uh, dialogue, any you know anything that's not specific to the playwright so that there's no bias in any way. Mm -hmm. We just want the best plays chosen. And I imagine uh, within a month, we'll have contacted the winners and be ready to publicize uh, those three plays that are going to move forward to production. That, that sounds really good. And, you know, we're, this is today's Friday, so they got a few days. If yep. they, still, they still have time to submit. So please let them know where to go if they're, they're interested and want to submit by Monday at midnight. Yeah, we want your plays. So if this is the first you're hearing about it, come one, come all. Just try try throw it out there give your you know at least you'll have five six of us reading a play that'll be a cool experience if you're a first time playwright artsafterhours.com has all the information right on the main page and there's a form a google form to submit the play uh, but if anybody has any questions my information's on artsafterhours.com as well samantha at artsafterhours.com and i'm checking my email constantly to get back to folks with questions so Really, we just want we want people to be a part of it. And Mukala, I didn't even say the most exciting thing. So we have these three plays that we're gonna get produced on uh, probably a virtual performance of some kind in the spring. But when we produce those three plays, the audience is gonna get to vote for their number one of those three. Okay. And the number one play winner is gonna get produced live in our next season when we can be in person again. So okay. it'll be maybe a short before one of our one of our main productions. Uh, but so, you know, you could go from never having written a play before to having professional actors and creative teams 
putting up your 10 minute play in the arts after hours black box. So I hope people will take advantage of the opportunity because it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Especially for those that have aspirations of being, uh, being a, a big time person on TV one day. So this is <laughs> like, you. this is, this is, they could be just <laughs> like, like this. Yeah. Just like me. <laughs> this is, you know, you got to start small and then, you know, got to start somewhere. So why not? with arts after hours and their playwrights contest. That's a, that's a way to go, especially all the talent we have in Lynn. There's so much talent that, you know, people hold back on. They need to let that go. Is it, please let them know the social media pages as well. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, all the links at artsafterhours.com. But if you just search arts after hours, we are the only ones you're going to find us at arts after hours, Insta, facebook.com slash arts after hours. Join us. We want to, we want to be a part of, your creative writing we want to see it definitely and once again the deadline is march 15th this upcoming monday at midnight so you have time it's only a t- it's only 10 minutes a 10 minute play so get it done let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you samantha once again this was very great and Thanks, I-, I can't wait to see the final productions of who wins Same. and what they put out me too Thanks so much. No problem. You guys have been watching the Lynn Lowdown. I'm your host, Macaulay Cabongo. Have a great day.